the bell icon to turn on notifications. In the past few videos, we've looked at a company managed project. And when we created the project, it came with a scrum board. However, we don't really have any issues <laughs> in it. So in this video, we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to look at how we can create a new scrum board in the same project. And while we're at it, we will also have Jira create some sample data so we have some issues to work with. So let's start by creating a new scrum board in this marketing team project that we've created. So come over here to the board dropdown, click on create board. And the key thing I wanna point out here is we can create a scrum board, come in here, click this button, and we'll do that here in a second. But I also wanna point out, we can create a Kanban board. Even though we used the scrum project template, we can create a Kanban board in that same project. The template is really just how things are set up. From there, we can customize things however we want. And vice versa is true as well. If we created uh, a project with a Kanban template, we could create uh, a scrum board in there as well. So let's create a scrum board. Now here, we need to tell Jira where we want to create this, right? So do we want this board to be created with a new project? That's basically what we did in the last video, except we went the other route. We created the, the project with the board. This is creating the board with the project. End result is the same. It's just a matter of kind of where you go to do that. We can create the, create the board from an existing project, or we can create it from an existing saved filter. Now, we haven't looked at filters yet. Those are essentially, uh, think of them like saved searches. So we can create a board around a filter, and we'll look at how filters are a vital part to boards, and we'll look at those uh, here in a little bit. But for this video, we're going to create the board from an existing project. Now, we need to give this a name. So let's call this our sample scrum board. Now we need to tell Jira two things. One, what is the project that we want to be, we want this to be based off of? Where do we want those issues coming from? So let's say we want them to be coming from the marketing team. And then by default, Jira is going to say, oh, that's a project. We're going to have this live in that same project. We could change this if we wanted to. If we wanted the issues on the board to be from the marketing team, but we wanted the board itself to live in the Lefebvre team project, we could change that. So they can be independent of each other. And this is where it's starting to, it can get a lot more complex, but you get a lot more customization of how you can organize things across these company managed projects. All right, so let's create our board. And there we go. We have this new board. Let me skip this. So it's the same as the other board, as you can see, because they're both scrum boards. They're both blank scrum boards <laughs> that we've just created, but we can customize these separately. So as we're going through some of the customizations in this section, just keep in mind that you can have multiple boards and different customizations for different boards living in the same project. Okay, so now that we have this board created. Let's let's have Jira give us some issues so we have some data to work with so everything isn't completely blank like this. So to do this, I'm gonna come up, come back to create board. And instead of just creating the board, I'm gonna create the board with some sample data. Now there is something to keep in mind here. When we do this, it's going to create a new project, right? That we're not creating it from an existing project or an existing filter, we're creating a whole new project that's going to create that, put some issues in that project, and then also create a board. Okay, so I'm going to say okay, we can leave this as a sample scrum project. That's fine. Go ahead and create this. Now, Jira is going to go through the process of creating the project, creating the board, and creating a bunch of issues for us on that board. So let's give it a moment to think about that. And there we go. So we have this, we have a bunch of issues on here. And we'll we'll look at this here in a little bit, kind of get familiar with what we're what we're looking at here. But for the purposes of this video, I do want to point out that we have this new project that's been created, the sample scrum project. You can see the ID key. SSP is, is that key for that project. And that's different than the marketing board. 
or even the sample scrum board that we've created. You'll notice that these don't have any of those issues. So let's move on to our next video where we'll get familiar with what we're looking at here and all of this, this interface and, and get familiar with the board itself. And then we'll get into customizing the board and how we can get issues on that sample board that we created get these issues on that sample board that we created and see those across different projects. All right, so I'll see you in the next video where we'll get a good overview of this screen here. In the past couple of videos, we've looked at how we can create Scrum Agile boards in company-managed projects. Now that we have a lot of data and a lot of issues on our Scrum board, let's take a couple minutes to understand what we're looking at here. So as with everything with the left menu, you can see we can hover over, we can collapse or open this up. That's really the case uh, anywhere here inside of JIRA, just to give us a little bit more room to see things, uh, depending on how many columns you have on the board. That's where I find it can be really, really helpful to collapse that if we need to. Up here, we have our breadcrumb. So we can see where we're at, right? So this is the board that we're on. The board lives inside this project. And then this project, is, well, it's a project, so we can access all of our projects uh, by clicking on this breadcrumb link here. And then down below, we can search so we can filter the issues on our board. So let's say we only want to see the issues that have, if I could spell properly, detail in them. You can see, oh, it has details in the summary. So this is the only issue that we're filtering. So just a quick way to filter all of the issues on the board. And then to the right of that, we can filter based on the user that that issue is assigned to. We saw this when we were looking at the team managed projects. It's the same concept here in the company managed projects. If we only want to see the issues that are assigned to me, to Dan, we can filter that. Or we can find any of the issues that are unassigned. Or if there are other people who have issues assigned to them, we'll see them show up here and we can start to filter them out. You can, you'll notice that that's actually additive as well. So we can add, see any issues that are assigned to me and unassigned or assigned to me and somebody else can uh, add that as well. Right here, these buttons here may look a little different on your side if your JIRA administrator has started to customize some of this. So these are called quick filters and these two right here are kind of pre-built, they're built in, but these are fully customizable by really the project administrator can uh, customize these as well. It's just a quick way, again, to filter things. So only the issues that are mine or only the issues that have been updated recently, which recently, I think it's a day. We'll look at these board settings here in a little bit, but yeah, Updated, yeah, so updated within the, the past day is what recently means. But, you know, we can customize that, right? And again, we'll look at customizing quick filters uh, later on in this section. Over here on the right side, let me clear this out so we see all of the issues on the board. Over on the right side, this is for automation. So we can start to add some automation to the issues on this board. And we'll have a video dedicated to the basics of automation and how that works in the next section. But just know that you can access some of that here directly on the board. We can star this board. So we looked at starring projects earlier in this course. It's the same concept. Think of it like bookmarking or, or favoriting. If you were to star this, let's if we go under your work, under the boards, you can see the recent ones that we've accessed. But watch what happens when I star this. Now, if I come here, we can see it's always going to be up there. It might need to actually refresh for it to update. There we go. So we can see this board has been starred. So it's not in the recent anymore. It's always going to be pinned essentially to the top of that menu. So just a quick way to access the board if we want quick access to that. To the right, we have how many days are remaining in the sprint. So this is going to be based on how long the sprint is. If you remember from earlier section, a sprint is a predetermined amount of time. So if your team is sprinting for two weeks and this is the first day of the sprint, then you're going to have two weeks left, you know, 14 days left on that sprint. So this is just a, a 
quick way to be able to see how much time is left to get all of the issues on the board completed. Then to the right of that, we can complete the sprint. So once the sprint is over and we're going into our sprint planning meeting, in the sprint planning meeting, we'll complete the sprint before we actually start a new one. So that's this is where you can do that. We can share the board. So we can share this with anybody who has access to this project inside of JIRA. Right? So if you try to share this outside the organization and they don't have access to the JIRA, then they won't, you know, they'll, be prompted to create an account or log in or whatever it may be. And they won't necessarily have access to that, but you can share this uh, with your team members there. And then of course we have the uh, three dots where we can change some more board settings. We'll look at that in our next video. Actually, uh, we do have some insights here. So they can give us some quick stats about our sprint, you know, what our current progress is for the sprint, just a quick way to be able to see how things are going without going into the full reports or anything like that. Just a, a really quick way to see that directly on the board. Now, before we do get to some of those board settings, I wanna hop over here real quick because a big part of a scrum board is the backlog as well. So let's look through the backlog in this interface and kind of get familiar with these. You can see there's a lot of similarities. So the search, the filter uh, based on assignee, the quick filters, the the insights, the three little you know uh, dots for the drop down there to get to the board settings. All that is pretty much the same. But we also have our backlog. So these issues are not in the sprint. Actually, you know what? This might be a little bit easier just to walk through a sample process for what this sprint might look like. So let's say we're we're working. It's the last day of our sprint, right? So we're in our sprint planning meeting. We're doing our next, we're preparing for the next sprint. First step would be to complete this sprint. And so here Jira is going to say, okay, there were three issues that were completed. You can see these three issues are done here. Three issues that are still on the board that are not complete so what should we do with those three issues that are not complete? Do you want to move them to the new sprint, which means it'll automatically put them on the new sprint to get done in the next sprint, whether, you know, two weeks, a week, a month, however long your sprint is, or do you want to shift them to the backlog? So for this, let's actually add those to the new sprint so we can see what happens there. Complete this. It's going to take us to the report. We can see how well we did. We can have that discussion over what went well, what didn't go well, start to see that, really start to see some of the the issues, these particular issues that were done, some that were not done, and start to break that down more and really get into some of the details of where some of the roadblocks may have been. When we're ready to figure out what the work is for the next sprint, you can hop into the backlog. And you can see the three issues that we had that were incomplete have automatically been added to the next sprint. Uh, if we want to filter these, we can filter them based on the, the team member, so who it's assigned to and in order to be like, you know, Dan, these are the issues that you really need to work on getting complete in the next sprint, going through each, each person. We can see the versions, so we can see the different versioning. And remember, we talked about what versions are where we can group together issues, so we can see in version 2.0, where there are seven issues total, two of them are complete. And there's still a couple that are on the sprint. There's some that are in the backlog. We can start to filter that down if we want to. We can do the same for epics. So we can see all the issues that are in epics. There's currently no issues in epics. We'll, we'll look at those uh, more later on when we start to work with roadmaps and stuff. But if we have epics, it's the same sort of concept as the versions. just another way of, of grouping those. The same sort of concept as far as this display is here inside of the, the backlog. Now, because we had Jira add those to a new sprint automatically, we already have a sprint that's been created. We could create a new sprint if we if we needed to, if we didn't have anything here, or we can edit this sprint if we say, you know, you know what, um, we're going to do two weeks, or no, we're going to do four weeks. We can have a custom start and end date, however we want to, for that that sprint, and then. The next step would be to add any issues that we need to. So if there's any issues that are in the backlog that we need to add, then now is the time to do that. So either we can left click and drag to bring that up, or we can use this little thing right here in order to drag it down and say, um, 
how many do we want to add? So maybe we want to add those three to the sprints. Just a quick way of doing that. One cool thing to keep in mind, a little, little tip here, is we can do this using these filters as well. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say this here, I'm going to come in and let's assign this to Mary. So we have a few different issues that are assigned to somebody other than myself. So now we can say, okay, here in the backlog, let me refresh this so we can see this, this filter update up here. So we can see, okay, now we have Mary up here. So we can say, okay, Dan, it's your turn to go through the issues that you need. Uh, there's currently nothing in your backlog. You know, we could create new issues if we need to go through that process. When it's Mary's turn, we can look at just hers and say, okay, these are the, the, the issues you need to work on. Let's just drag those in really quickly rather than having to select them uh, and, and do that. So it's a, it's a nice way of just being able to work a little bit faster when you're going through that sprinting process. When you're happy with things that are there, actually, I'm going to take these. I'm going to hold down shift, left click, and we can drag those back out. So anything that's unassigned, we're only going to have assigned issues in the sprint. Now, the next step is to start the sprint. Confirm that, yep, two weeks. Okay, two weeks from today, start that sprint. And now we go back to that day-to-day -day process of taking those issues, working them through the statuses in the columns in order to get them to completion. Okay, so to recap, in this video, we got an overview of a Scrum Agile board, as well as a quick rundown of an example sprint workflow. Now, in our next video, we'll look at some ways that we can customize our Scrum boards. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.